So tonight is let me make sure you guys make sure everyone is muted yourself. Make sure yourself is muted. Tonight is day 15. Somebody say hallelujah. Day 15 and tonight we're talking about the value of integrity. The value of integrity. So Father, we just pray that right now that what is said would stick. And when it sticks, Father, that we would be able to release it in our lives and in front of others and even when we're not in front of others that we would become people of integrity even at levels beyond what we are already in jesus name amen all right so here we go let's pass out some scriptures so we can um keep on going hey martha i'm gonna have you read matthew 5 8 And Norm, I'm gonna have you read, and I really, real, really will, really will have you read Proverbs 4:23, and then uh, will W I L, my Russian speaking friend, can you read First Samuel 16:7? So while you guys are all finding that, I'm going to start with Matthew 5, 8. Go. Oh. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Proverbs 4, 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Yeah, keep you. I have a version that says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Uh, Will, 1 Samuel 16 7. There you go. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, we're a little slow at the hunter's house. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his stature, because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees. For humans see what is visible, but the Lord sees the heart. Sounds like Jackie's new version she's loving. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature. Because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees man. Looks, man looks on the uh, outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. We are talking about the value of integrity tonight. If a tree falls in a forest and no one is there to hear it, does it make a noise? Whether a noise is heard or not, the fallen tree is dead and there is now a hole in the forest. There is an impact just because there's a hole. Integrity is what you do when no one is looking and you can think of it like, like that tree in the forest. Does it matter what you do when no one is looking? Is there really an impact? What about how it impacts your relationship with God? Those are like three questions right there. Does it matter what you do when no one is looking? And is there really an impact? And the third question is, what about how it impacts your relationship with God? Excuse me. <laughs> God looks at the heart. And we cannot hide this from him. He knows it all. What we look at, think about, talk about, and act on are all made clear to our creator. Integrity uh, is from the heart. Poor integrity does not protect the heart. Rather, it tries to destroy it and disobeys God. Good integrity protects the heart and it keeps the heart pure. It heals 
and ultimately obeys God. Poor integrity, to repeat, does not protect the heart. Rather, it tries to destroy it and disobeys God. Good integrity protects the heart. It keeps the heart pure, heals, and ultimately obeys God. Consistently poor integrity that disobeys God is defiance to God. It slowly builds a brick wall between us and God, of course, until we can hardly hear him at all. Poor integrity hinders our connection with God. And good integrity, good integrity does not does not mean being perfect. <clears throat> it is it is tumbling, it is repenting and being obedient to God even when no one is watching. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to go there. You guys can go if you want to. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. I'm going to read out of the ESV version. Matthew 6, verse 5, and I'm going to probably read 6 too. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Some versions say we'll, we'll reward you openly. Look at Matthew, same book, uh, chapter 25. And look at verse 31. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glory, glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. From the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, feed you, thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when do we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, or the king will answer, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, the goats, Depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. Thirsty, you gave me no drink. Stranger, you did not welcome me. Naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when did you, then when did we see you? Hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and, and did not minister to you. Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into, into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. 
my father. We have three questions. How much do you value integrity? Number two, why does God choose to look at the heart of a person? And number three, how might God use your integrity to impact the people around you? Let's say this prayer together. I just realized something reading this scripture. Okay, let's say this prayer together. Heavenly Father, I know you can see my thoughts and know them completely. I want to be obedient to you. Allow others to see that you changed me from the inside out. Amen. Amen. So our questions are, how much do you value integrity? Why does God choose to look at the heart of a person? And how might God use your integrity to impact the people around you? And before we answer in reading that scripture, when he's talking about the final, the, the, this judgment between the sheep and the goats. He's talking about two kinds of people that are in the same place. He's talking about two kinds of Christians. He's talking about two kinds of believers in the church. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, verse 31 says, and the angels with him, that whole thing happening, sitting on his throne, before him are gathered all the nations, and then he separates people one from another as the shepherd separates sheep from from the goats. And when he says in, I just want to point it out because first he talks to the people on his right, which are the sheep, right? And then he talks to the goats the same way, but he said, he lets them know you, you must depart from me. He gives them judgment first, but here he says, They answer the goats. They answer saying, Lord, when did when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Which is to say we did. But when did we do it? And we didn't we didn't. When did we not do it? They thought they were doing something. They're like, when did we when did we see you that way? We didn't. All right. Okay, let's talk about these questions.